Uh, I've got I've got no cool transition, so we'll just go to St. Louis. Also eliminated on the same day as Sporting KC, the 28th of September. Uh, they made a really improbable run to the top of the West in their first year. They missed out on the playoffs in their sophomore slump season. Bradley Carnell was sent packing, but their winter signings look set for them to bounce back in 2025. While the future looks bright, we should examine what went wrong in 2024. Nice. That's a, that's a nice little entry you got there. I like that. Listen, that's that's me, man. Like, I'm just, I'm the best. Well, you know what I don't like is their striker situation. And my first point, I titled Striker Machine. And in my opinion, this team really needs a striker machine. And somebody like Erling Holland. Now, obviously, every team can use a Holland, all right? But what I mean by that is... A striker who only thinks about goals. A striker who has like 10 touches a game and half of them are shots at goal or tap-ins. It feels like there is so much creative talent on this team with guys like Hartel, Tushert, Leuven, that if you just had a Chicharito-esque player at striker, this would be one of the best attacks in the league. It, right now they have Klaus up top, but for me, he almost falls more in that creative label as well especially considering he's only got 15 goals in 3,200 minutes in his time uh, with his time in St. Louis so far. So this, at least for me, doesn't need to be a designated player level striker, but just someone who has a nose only for goal. Let the rest of the creative work and just let this guy get into spaces where he can just find ways to score goals because there's a lot of good creative talent on this team. For me, and I think this is a pretty clear one, it's something that we predicted, but not nearly this bad, uh, regression to the mean, right? Wasn't a secret that St. Louis overperformed in their first year. Players and team both regressed back in 2024. In 2023, Roman Berkey uh, had a 9.1 PSXG plus minus, three goals saved over average or over expected um, compared to his 6.5 in 2024. Uh, and he conceded an extra 10 goals in that span. In 2023, they scored an insane 20 goals over their expected goals. 20 goals over their XG. That's stupid. This <laughs> year, a, a more expected three goals over their XG. In 2023, Klaus was in the golden boot rate. This year, he had an early injury. He only bagged five goals, right? This is where they were predicted to be in year two. I think they were probably supposed to be around this area in year one, maybe a bit higher. But this is a regression back to where they're supposed to be. Next year, they'll probably be somewhere in the middle. Spoilers. I didn't ask for spoilers. You're supposed to say oh, spoilers you before it. you say it. Well, you got it. You know what I don't got? An idea of what this defense is going to look like next year. And my next point is that it is titled Sort Out the Defense. Is When I look at this team's stats right now, outside of Tulland, I really wonder what the back line is going to look like. Parker has been a big piece of the back line since St. Louis's inception, but now he's been moved on for Kessler. On top of Kessler is Nilsson, Horn, and Hybert at center back, as well as Nerwinski, who can play there or on the right. This also doesn't account for anyone else that they bring in during the offseason. And even in the last few games of this season, they've been rotating around who's been in the back line. I think going into next season, it will help a lot if they have a set back line in place so that they can build both chemistry and confidence together. But I think towards the end of this season, we've seen a you know, we've seen some defensive issues throughout the year with just people having to be rotated in and out of defense and not really having a set team here. So maybe they need to take a page out of the SKC book and, and build a little bit of consistency, but not too much. Don't read the book too much. Only read it <laughs> once. Consistency to the point where your your coach doesn't leave for two decades. No matter yep. how bad you are. Speaking of coach, my, my second one is Carnell's system, right? Those of you who don't know, I watched him at Red Bull. And it's pretty easy to see how without the right players in the system, the system fails, right? And I think um, Jared Stroud is not a household name designated player sort of guy, but he fit that system so well. And when he left, they were a little thin and they were able to, th that system wasn't as good as it was with him, right? And it shows in the attacking output of the St. Louis side, right? Their top two goal scorers are people they brought in during midseason transfer window this year. No one in that team has over 10 goals this year. 
the system failed the players that it had. For whatever reason, the system also involved bribing the other team to give it to them outside of the six yard box, like 30 uh, times. Move on already. Come on, move on. <laughs> it's last um, year. But it, it wasn't a surprise that there was uh, an uptick in output when the new manager and new players came in who allowed them to play a little bit more freedom. They got more players who could play in that system. Like that change doesn't shock me, which is why I'm not worried about this team. Um, but you can tell that that system that they used that only had one option, get it high, press hard, win it back, score, right? When those players can't do that with Klaus getting hurt, with Stroud moving on, that system isn't as potent and as successful. And if you don't have a plan B, you're going to be less, you're going to, you're going to be poor. Right. So when the new coach comes in and says, Hey guys, let's play football. You see, there's an uptick in, in, in attacking output. Yeah. So I guess I will never move on by the way. I don't know. I don't know what sort of like match fixing that is, but I will never move on. Anyway, I'm going to move on to my last point here. And, And it's in a similar vein to what you were talking about. And I've called it lack of time. So, There's been a lot of change with this team in this season. And mind you that uh, this is only their second season of existence. So the change has come fast and furious. Carnell was shockingly fired early during this season after an incredible inaugural season. So majority of the year has been under a caretaker manager. Add to that that the previous previously mentioned trade involving one of their team leaders, Tim Parker. And that's another big change for the side. Lastly, they also added a few big uh, big time additions in Hartel and Toy Shart joining up with the team in the summer. So they still have to build chemistry with the rest of the team, despite the fact that they've both been on a very good start with the team so far. I think finding the right manager and giving the team an offseason to gel will be huge for them leading into the next season. I think the momentum has already started to shift in their favor, considering they've only lost two of their last nine games. Reminder, this is recorded before their last game, so could be three and ten, but we'll see. Damn. Was really really riding that uh, end of year prediction for them, huh? Maybe. I mean, you mentioned it first. Oh, my wait, last one. Did I make an end of year prediction for them? Yeah, you said that they were they were going to miss the playoffs, but they were going to win a bunch of their last games and like end on a high note. Which I would say they have. Don't even remember your own predictions. This is why I'm beating you. <laughs> That's because um, we haven't done the recap episode yet. <laughs> my last one, similar to uh, our friends in SKC. We're back to off the field issues. And I don't think issues is the right word for this team, but similar to SKC, they had multiple off the field. I use the term situations that took away from the on the field product, right? Edward Leuven, one of their best players on the team, had to miss 10 games this season because his wife was going through brain cancer treatment, right? Najee Bloom, central midfielder in the team, suspended for violating team rules. And even though there was no specification on what it was, he was sent back to South Africa before the end of the year. Sam Adenarin, all the promise in the world, one of my favorite attackers when uh, Klaus went down, disagreements with coaching staff, sideline him from games and training session, throw him in with the twos, and then ship him off to Philly. And we say this all the time, right? You can't keep your locker room in order. That stuff tends to drift onto the pitch, cause issues in your play. Uh, and it, it probably played a, a little bit into S, uh, probably played a little bit into St. Louis's rough season. However, the good news is things are looking up. The bad news is they have to wait four months till they can see it happen again because they are out. Is that a baseball reference? You want to talk baseball? Let's go Mets, am I right? Let's not get sidetracked here. Stay focused. 